Now, the sound of the 80s were definitely iconic. Artists like Michael Jackson, David Bowie, Aha, uh -huh, Tears for Fears, Depeche Mode, and many, many more have had such a tremendous impact on music and music production that their influences can still be heard today in modern day productions. In this video, I wanna share with you some music production tips that'll transport your current tracks right back to the 80s. So let's dive right in. All right, so throughout this video, I'm gonna be working within a session of a song that I produced called Got That featuring Gigi Rowe for a song that was released on Ubisoft's Just Dance franchise. So it definitely has and captures that 80s vibe that I wanna kinda of accentuate throughout this video. So I'll play you a little snippet of it, and then we'll walk through some principles that you can apply onto your tracks. So let's focus in on some of the iconic drum sounds that we can hear in the 80s. Everything from huge stadium rock acoustic drum kits to drum machines that just had a life of their own. Now, some iconic drum machines such as the 808, 909, the LM1, LM2, Lindrum, Oberheim DMX really made their way on a lot of 80s records. So I wanna cover and highlight specific production tips that can help those type of drums fit right in place with the 80s atmosphere. So let's focus in on some 808. I'm gonna highlight a rhythm from Africa Mambada's Planet Rock. Now for this, we're gonna focus in on using the 808 kit. I'm using a stock Ableton Live 808 core kit. So any 808 kit that you might come across will do just fine. Now something to keep in mind is a big proponent of using drum machines in the 80s as opposed to in the 70s or earlier where it was really about the drummer being as loose as possible. This here, we're now step sequencing. We're drawing in our notes. We're applying the notes to a grid. So you had this very stiff robotic approach to a lot of the drum programming. It was new in the 80s and it was really exciting at the time. So it was kind of leaning away from that looseness and now to this stiff robotic approach with step sequencing the drums. Now the original 808, there was an issue that was uh, released that actually had a higher pitch snare drum. So to get a little bit more bite from your drums, consider tweaking the actual pitch of your drums. So I'm gonna take the normal pitch that was here that we have in our stock 808 sound and actually go into the transpose section here in our controls and bring this up a couple semitones. And just by tweaking the pitch of your drums, you already have a tighter drum sample to work with. That can translate into a punchier drum sound and all around just a snappier attack with your drums. Then I'm gonna layer that with the clap and also do something similar with the clap sample as well. We'll go a couple semitones up. So we have our hi-hat panned a little bit more to the right. But what we also can do here is in the controls is thin it out by using some EQ, or in this case, I'm gonna use the onboard filter here to eliminate some of the low end. And we're also going to transpose the hi-hat sample a couple pitches up. That transposing trick is really helping to keep these uh, 808 drums nice and tight and has a little bit more punch to it. Same thing here with the cowbell feature. I'm gonna go over to the controls and I'm gonna wipe away all that low end. Now with the reverb, I'm actually sending um, some reverb to the overall whole drum kit. And what I'm gonna be doing is I have my reverb on return track B over here and I'm using a Lexicon Digital Reverb. And we're gonna to touch more about this in a little bit, but Digital Reverb was all the rage during the 80s, especially when it came to drums. So things like room and halls and things like that, spacious reverb was just an iconic sound on all the, uh, all the drums. So I'm going to send a little bit of that return track B, but what we can do is use an EQ 
before the reverb so that we can eliminate a little of that low end. And it gives a bit more clarity to that reverb as it's not actually applying that reverb to anything in the lower register of the frequency spectrum. So no low end, not to give any muddy reverb, and it just highlights a little bit more on the high, mid, and the brightness of the reverb. So it kind of feels like the only thing that has reverb on it would be the hi-hats and the snare. That's kind of what we're going for. Now let's focus in on that laser sound that we can hear on Planet Rock and a numerous amount of 80s music as well. So it was really widely used on a lot of 80s music. And what I'm doing here is I'm creating an additional drum rack in Ableton Live. And instead of loading samples in the drum rack, I'm going to load an instrument in C1 and in uh, D2. And so what I'm doing is I'm actually going to just have one oscillator synth. So if you're following along and you're not using Ableton Live, any whatever DAW you're using, you can accomplish the same thing. So I'm gonna use the analog, I'm gonna set the oscillator one to our sine wave. And what we're gonna be focusing in on is the pitch envelope. Any synth that will allow you to manipulate your oscillator will have a pitch envelope feature on there. And simply what we're doing is focusing on bringing up that pitch envelope, that initial one right up here. And then we have that initial glide from having that uh, pitch go way up and then it dies right down. So I've just brought the octave down here, but you can change the octave and have that same effect happen just at a higher register. So just adjust your pitch, initial pitch envelope, and that'll give you the results you're looking for. When I bend this down over here, it'll determine the speed of that pitch bend. And then what I did was copy that analog over here to this one, and I simply just made that one a whole two octaves higher. So when you look at the sequence, we have the same pattern as our kick drum. And then the cherry on the top is this classic orchestral hit that was used on numerous amount of records throughout the 80s, and it was found on the CMI uh, sampling keyboard. And I'm simply just using Arturio's emulation of the CMI, just went for that orchestra two patch, dialed it right in, and there you go. And now let's turn our attention to more of a Lionel Richie, All Night Long, Denise Williams, let's hear it for the boy, Cindy Lauper, Michael Jackson, more of an upbeat dance type of drum rhythm and focusing in on using the Lin drum and Oberheim DMX. These are two iconic drum sounds widely used through so many records in the 80s. So I have a drum rack here loaded with some classic Lin drum sounds. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're loading or using vintage drum machine samples, you don't really have to do heavy processing to them. Why? Because the sound themselves were so iconic that they're just an instant callback to that era. So I don't wanna you know, convolute it too much by adding a lot of processing to these drums. They sound great right out of the box, and it's immediately, that's exactly what it sounded like from the Lindrum. And it's just a bit about processing it so that it fits in the overall picture of the track that you're working on. So here's the rhythm we're using. Now, if I open up this Lin drum rack that we've created, I wanna go ahead and add some gated reverb. Now, gated reverb was widely used throughout all of the 80s records, especially with drums. So I want to go ahead and incorporate that right onto the snare drum. So let's head over to our reverb here in Ableton Live. Let's look for a room reverb. We'll go with the big room, drag that right onto our snare drum, and then let's find our gate plugin and drag that right after the reverb. Now, the reason why this is such an iconic sound is because the gate is being used as a tool to curve that reverb tail, to shorten it and make it really abrupt. So dialing this back so that we hear a little bit of the dry signal and a little bit of that reverb. And now we'll just extend a little bit of the hold and the release on the gate. So it gives that nice snappy, really quick reverb room type of sound. And it was very widely used. Now, 
The problem with having it directly on the snare drum here is that I can't control or balance as well as I would like to the, the sound of the original dry Lindrum snare drum and the room reverb. So instead what we're gonna do is go over here to our drum rack in Ableton Live and enable the return button. This is gonna allow you to create an auxiliary return within the drum rack. So now I'm going to copy that room reverb and that gate by holding shift and dragging that away from the snare drum and into its own auxiliary. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this drum rack up and I'll give the auxiliary return another color so you can identify it. And now we have sends that show up for each of the samples in our drum rack in which we can now send over to the return track inside the drum rack. Now I have the ability to lower the actual gated reverb down and balance it out with the actual snare drum. Now, in case you've ever wanted to route a sound or sample in your drum rack to an actual return track within your project, like the ones I have over here, you simply go to that return track that we've just created inside the drum rack. And instead of choosing rack output, choose one of the return tracks that you have here. So let's say I wanted that snare to run to my return track A, which has an eighth note delay on it. Now, this would determine the amount of volume being sent to my return track A. But for right now, I just wanna choose rack output so that the output of this return track is going to our drum rack. And then I'm gonna layer that with the Oberheim DMX to create a really cool rhythm with hi-hats and a clap. And then we have some percussion elements that just kind of like that all night long record from Lionel Richie, we have it nicely panned and each of those elements have some reverb on there as well. I mean, reverb is just on everything. So I have kind of some tracks of me playing some pens on my desk and some percussive elements here. Now keep in mind that throughout the 80s, we're still tracking on to tape machines. And so that also plays a role in the output of the sound. It wasn't towards the end of the 80s where new technology was creeping in. So I'm running all these drums over to a uh, child tape model. It's a free tape emulation, and it adds that nice warmth and character that we would normally get when tracking onto tape. And then I'm gonna use the SSL channel strip here because the SSL board was just used on a lot of records throughout the 80s. And so there wasn't a lot of low end presence with the drums, um, not like what we have today in modern music where there's just a lot of bottom end heavy stuff. Um, so want to thin out a little bit of the low end from the kick. I think as I listened to the reference, the kick was really punchy and the drums were snappy, but there wasn't a lot of like low end coming from the kick drum. And oftentimes what I'll do is I'll crank the drive or the input gain and just lower the fader down here so I get a little bit more of that console saturation. And let's not forget about our gigantic stadium rock drum sounds. Iconic bands like Guns N' Roses, Heart, Kate Bush had a bunch of these big anthemic drums going on throughout their records. So for that, I'm gonna use an acoustic drum kit here by Addictive Drums and just doing a little bit of research as to what the actual kit and the drum sizes uh, were being used. So finding like a 22 inch kick drum, uh, 14 uh, snare by Ludwig and just kind of doing the size. But really the main focus is that the actual drum sound itself was tight but and short, but the reverb was taking more of the commanding spotlight. So the drums are just drenched in reverb and we're doing some parallel processing and some more gated reverb. So what I have here is I have these sounds routed. I'm choosing the separate output here, post, post fader, so that I can go ahead and create an audio track in Ableton Live, choose the input from, let's say right here, the track is called Kick or the Addictive Drums, and then I'm gonna choose the input for the corresponding sound, in this case, the snare drum. 
Be sure to set the input monitoring from auto or off to in so that you can monitor and hear the sound running through this audio track. So what I meant is that these drums are gonna be punchy, big, but they're going to be short in decay. And so let's go and add a little bit of processing. We're gonna add a little bit of brightness. I'm using the SSL channel strip again, just a little bit of brightness to the snare, some compression here, and a cool setting that can often be found using X, uh, SSLs is putting the threshold all the way up, like on stun, and then increasingly using the, the ratio. So just drive the ratio up till you find the compression setting that you like. But with the room mic, we're actually gonna have a gate on there so that we don't have that open, long decayed sound from the room. So I'll take the gate off. And I only want the gate to open when the snare hits. So I have it side chained here to the actual snare drum. I'm gonna lower the noise floor. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring the hole down a little bit and maybe raise the threshold just a bit. And that's gonna give this overall feel and sound of this big room only when the snare hits. So it's all, the life is coming from the overhead in that room mic. Now, let's go ahead and add, I'm grouping them all together and adding some parallel processing. So what I'm using is an 1176 and I have all the buttons smashed in so we get this really crazy over-exaggerated compression. And what I did was simply click that and hit Command G to group and create an actual audio effect rack with, uh, with that. So once I've done that, I went ahead, right clicked and created chain and this won't have any processing on it. So that's my dry signal. So I'm gonna combine the dry signal with this parallel or this com over exaggerated compressed signal. And then running it straight to tape. And now the crown jewel here for these drums will be reverb. Now we're gonna use two separate reverbs. We're gonna use a nonlinear short room reverb. So I have that on return track C. And for this, I'm using a slate digital. Uh, we're going to the nonlinears and length and we're choosing just a medium reverb there. With maybe just a pinch of pre-delay. And then we have on return track D, just a big room reverb. Once again, the, Alex, the Lexicon 224 digital reverb, we've got to set on a plate and just to making the adjustments here. So what I'm doing is I want to make sure I have a pretty good decay around like three seconds or so and a little bit of pre-delay and just mess around to taste. Now, when it comes to the sound of the 80s, we gotta talk about synthesizers. The 80s just became iconic for the use of synthesizers throughout so many records. And there were so many different iconic synths that were used, but there were a few that just found their way on the majority of the 80 records. And one of them being the DX7 by Yamaha. Now the DX7 stood out just because of the nature of its own synthesis. Frequency modulating. It was FM synthesis and it was new to the scene and it really created some iconic sounds. Now, there are plenty of DX7 emulations out there and I wanted to highlight one that is actually free. It's called Dext. And what makes this one unique is that it actually loads the direct ROMs from the original Yamaha DX7. So when you click cart, you can head over here to the ROM. You can load that up. And one of the most famous sounds from this synthesizer was the electric piano sound. It was just an iconic sound that you could hear on so many different records throughout the 80s, as well as the bass that you can hear on like records like Take On Me by AHA. Uh -huh. We also have some pretty cool sounds here like the tubular bells. 
little top gun there for you. Now, rather than going down the rabbit hole and trying to identify, oh, here's the patch that was used in that song, or here's the patch and preset used in that song, let's talk about some of the common characteristics of the synths and the way they were performed on some of the iconic songs throughout the 80s. So let's go ahead and create our bass line to layer on top of our drums. And for this, we'll start with a Juno 106, which is also a well-used synthesizer during that time. The Juno 106 or the Juno 60 was just a great all-around synth that was used. So I wanna go for a nice, fat, kind of juicy bass line. And for this, let's go ahead and create it from scratch. So I'll go new preset and I'll solo the bass line. Now, what we wanna do is go ahead and start bringing our filter frequency down here and shape our envelope, bringing the sustain down and decay down just a bit and open the release a little bit. Now we need to raise up our envelope because when we raise this up, the amount that this will have influence on our filter frequency will give us the type of tone that we want from our cutoff frequency. And now let's go ahead and enable the sub octave here. So we'll turn this on and we'll increase this slider. I think I have some reverb being sent to here, so I'll just keep it dry for right now. And let's go back here and raise up the resonance just a bit. So I'm lowering the cutoff and I'm gonna raise the attack a bit, open up the decay, and maybe raise the sustain. So it just stays a little bit longer while the note's being played. Oh yeah, lowering it down actually gave me the tone I'm looking for. And then I'll raise the release instead. So we have a little bit of tail once the note is let go. Now, what really highlights the characteristic of this is going to be the chorus. And the chorus effect on the Juno 60 and 106 were really unique and distinctive. So let's go ahead and enable the chorus by pressing this on. Let's bring in the drums. And I have just an EQ to shape the tone and again, printing this onto tape. Now I'm also going to copy that same bass pattern over to the FM bass here. And let's add some chorus. Now, one characteristic of synths that were used a lot were these lush brass pads that we can hear in Toto's Africa and so many other iconic songs. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, Arteria's Jupiter 8 for this. And just dialing up any brass patch will get you right in the ballpark. So let's go ahead and listen to this. So for this, we have our VCO1 and 2 set over to a uh, sawtooth. And I've got the source probably just mixed halfway between the two. Same principle here. I've got a nice low cutoff frequency. And I'm making sure that it has a bit of swell. And that's what gives it that distinct brass type of sound is the attack being raised up here. And the envelope I'm adjusting is the filter envelope. The filter envelope, when you bring the attack up, gives a bit of that swell, which in return gives it that brassy type of effect. Now, if you don't want it as bright, then you will lower the actual cutoff or the amount of the, the envelope modulation. So we've covered that coursey, rubbery type of bass line that was noticed in a lot of 80 records, the brass pads that are oftentimes sustained and create this nice lush atmosphere. 
Now I wanted to highlight one more layer, which would be some more of the brighter pads that we can hear on records like Don't You Forget About Me by Simple Minds. So for that, I'm gonna be using the Oberheim by Arturia, and we're using the OBXA. I've created this patch here called Don't You, and it's just really just opening up the sawtooth on both oscillators and creating this nice bright sound. Let me just solo that. Now, it's good to create some atmosphere with some reverb right on there, and of course, drenching the sound in chorus. It's just a big, noticeable, and identifiable trait of a lot of the synthesizers in the 80s. Let's check out the blend, combining all of these synth sounds together. Definitely in that all night long Cindy Lauper type of vibe, right? So let's now move over to some vocal processing as well as other little things that give this the finishing touch that I'm looking for. So when it comes to vocals, one thing hasn't changed since the 80s, and that is nothing could ever replace great performance. So that's always something to keep in mind when I talk about vocal production and having just great results is make sure that the atmosphere and the character is being captured in the recording. Now, one thing that was really kind of distinct with the 80s when it came to vocals was, well, reverb, right? Reverb was just drenched on everything and also some slap delays as well as using background vocals and not so much stacking and layering vocals like we do in our current productions now, but more so using the background vocals or doubles in certain moments to accent certain parts of the song. Now, it all comes down to the effects processing. So I'm gonna enable these sends here and I have uh, on return track D, we have that Lexicon 224 digital reverb. So I'm gonna go with either the vocal plate or just a bright hall. Mm, babe, can you make me feel it? Got that, oh yeah, I love it. Got that, mm, babe, can you make me feel it? Got that, oh yeah, I love it. And then for a return track E, we have a quick slapback delay. So I'm using the stock Ableton Live Echo here, just set to the 16th note on both channel with a very, very short feedback. And I've actually brought one side a little bit down in the percentage on the negative side. That's gonna create a really cool wide slapback effect. Mm, babe, can you make me feel it? Got that, oh yeah, I love it. Got so without these, let's just disable that. Now let's go ahead and enable these. So I love what the slapback delay is doing. It's causing that, um, that vocal to really just widen up, but really just take some uh, space there. So hear that a lot with some Cyndi Lauper type stuff. And a lot of 80 records have some really cool slapback delay there. And the reverb, it's not too intrusive. It just gives it and puts it in its right space. So focusing now on like some of the background vocals. So typically what I would do is just stack the vocal, left, right, left, right, left, right. Right here, we got four takes. So I have the background vocals in the lead singing the same exact part. So we'll bring down a little bit of that slap and just leave some of that reverb, process that differently on the background vocal. And I have all the background vocals running through the SSL channel here and just shaping the tone. But more importantly, I wanna just kind of accent certain parts. So let's figure out a part that we can just accent, meaning we'll just mute certain parts here. Mm, babe, can you make me feel it? Got that? So let's go, can you make me feel it? So we'll take this out here. I'm gonna hit zero to just mute that and just accent the can you make me feel it, got that. And those mm parts, I'm gonna mute just for now and see what that does in the track. So it has this nice call and response. We get a little bit of width when the background vocals come in and then they kind of come out. So I'll go ahead and just have the main mm's for right now. We'll just gray that out. 
And so now we have the harmonies just coming in all together with the background vocals. It's just just creating that atmosphere with the vocals, the slap back delay, the reverb, the digital reverb on the vocals there. And then what I'm gonna do is just insert a little bit of some extra production to kind of really tip it over the edge into the 80s, such as, hey, let's get some crowd noise. And this always takes me back to like that all night long record by Lionel Richie. So I got that going on and just kind of tucking that away in the bottom. And whenever you can, throw a mean saxophone solo right in the midst of everything. So many things were covered in this video. I just wanna say thank you for hanging on. Thank you for watching to the end. And as my gift to you for watching this video, I'd love to send you uh, an Ableton Live session that I've made with the sounds presets that you found in this video. I went ahead and exported the patches I made for some of the Arteria VSD plugins, as well as made some other patches that you can use, such as in synths like Vital, which is a free VST instrument that you can download that kind of replicates the same sounds that I created in this video. Also, some of the vintage drum machine samples that I use in this video can also be yours. I'll put these sessions together all combined with multiple sessions and effects and things that you can use to help you move forward with your projects in the link below in the description box. So simply click that or you can visit beatacademy.com slash pack to access this. And if you're already a Beat Academy member, we'll send out an email to you with the link in which you can just access the files that I've just mentioned. Once again, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe so that when I put out another video, YouTube will be sure to notify you and keep you up to date with what's going on. Take care and I'll see you next time.